guys. Oh my God. Wait till we, I'm still trying to fix this stupid thing. How is everybody? I know you caught me live. Here I am. I'm alive and I'm live. Okay, wait. There. And I'm itchy again. Ah, ah, itchy. Okay, how is everybody? Oh my gosh. Okay, so like, I can't even describe why I got detained tonight. I literally got detained in Toluca Lake. Um, good evening. Good evening. Sounds like our Alfred Hitchcock. Okay, so I totally, before I even get started, got detained tonight. Oh my God, Hot Springs Village. That sounds fun. I got detained. Why? Because I was running errands and I parked on the side street. So Riverside Drive in Toluca Lake, I parked on the side street, right? I forget which one. Anyway, I parked on the side street. I come out of the store. I'm in a parking spot. Dude in a black charger. Dude in a, in a black charger. Okay, there's a car in front of me, a car behind me, right? And a couple more in front. This guy parks right beside me with his beep, beep, beep blinkers on and gets the fuck out of his car and disappears. Literally gets out of his car. And I'm like, dude. And so I get out of the car and I'm looking in the restaurant. I'm like, oh, Palm Springs, Palm Springs. Anyway, I'm like, dude, where did you go? You, you entitled piece of, bleh. anyway, he, he was there. So the people behind me, the woman waiting in the passenger seat, she got her husband out of the restaurant and then literally backed their car up so I could get out. No, I mean, honest to God, I was like, where is this fucking asshole? Like, seriously, I know you're special and everything, but he's parked in the middle of the street. So people turning the corner, where I was the second car in, they had to go into oncoming traffic lane to go by this idiot. Yeah, but I bet you he had to like run and get something to eat. Oh my gosh, right? Hey, baby. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was like, wow. So I was delayed. I was like losing my mind. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, well, we did the hair. We cut the hair. We recut the hair. That's what we do. So the hair and we bleach the hair. That's what was going on. But dude was parked literally, literally, literally. Okay. How do you have 12, lots of, wait, do you have lots of 12 houses? Are you talking about an astrology chart? Anyway, does astrology differ from those in the Southern? Yeah, astrology literally, differ, it's different with everyone's chart. But I wanted to talk about um, Sinead, however you say, I know, no soup for him, right? What a fucker. I'm like, where is this asshole? There was a coffee shop around the corner and there was some restaurant to my right. And I go to the, when the husband of the woman in the passenger seat came out, I go, where is this fucking asshole? I go, self-entitled piece of shit. And he's like, oh yeah, he looked like a piece of shit. He goes, hold on, I'll back up for you. Cause I was going to lose my mind. He literally was beside me and I'm like, who parks in the traffic lane and puts their blinker on and blocks someone in? Like what? Fuck him. Anyway, I wanted to talk about Sinead O'Connor because, um, well, you know what? I know, what a weirdo, right? But you know why I want to talk about her? Because her 17-year-old son died on the 6th of January, which, yes, which I can't bear. Well, obviously, I can't bear it. I can't bear it for anybody. I cannot bear for anybody to lose a son or a daughter. I cannot bear it on any, yeah, did they say, well, they did say that her son was in um, a hospital, a mental hospital on a psych hold, probably a 5150 or whatever, psych hold for suicidal, a suicide hold, a psych hold. And mm, he escaped because when you're in a hospital on a suicide hold and you're a minor child and you're on a hold, you can escape. Like who opened the fucking door? Who opened the door? Well, they say she has bipolar, but I wanted actually, I pulled her chart up because I wanted to look at her chart. She and I are the same age. Uh, born, she's born, actually I'm three months young, three months older, geez. Three months older than, than her. She's born in 66. She's a Sag, so I think she's December 8th, but I'm just pulling it up because I had it up. So I have to pull up her natal, natal chart. Okay, so I wanted to like look at her, you know, what the hell was going on with her. 
Obviously, obviously it's not good. I was, yeah, I know. Those, wait, they always try to disrespect those. Yeah, of course they do. Of course. And she did. She ripped the picture of the Pope up. But the Pope, okay, here I go. I got kicked off of Facebook for my Pope picture. So <laughs> I've been kicked off of Facebook. But the Pope in and of it, probably not all the Popes, but um, yeah. Oh my God. Thank you. She looks good for her age too. She's just had a rougher, like she did, she does smoke and she does do drugs. So, you know, we're both the same age. I'm three months older, three months older y'all. Okay. So she's a Sag. She's a double Sag. So when somebody is a double, um, yeah, that Pope picture, I know I threw the, I got kicked off of Facebook for that Pope picture. First of all, the body and the blood of Christ. I'm not eating your cannibalism, body and blood of Christ. Even if you've talked your whole congregation into believing that's accurate. I'm not doing it. Um, yeah, of course she suffered horrible abuse. It's obvious. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Oh my God. Was this Tracy? Tracy, thank you so much. Oh, you didn't. Oh my God. Tracy, thank you. Overly generous, Tracy. Oh my God, thank you so much. You guys are so kind. Thank you, but I just saw that go by. I said, I saw Eric's and I'm like, wait, there's, and it, I saw the T for Tracy. Thank you. Hi, Ashley, honey, how are you? I was reading your stuff today, Ashley. Um, but getting back to uh, Sinead O'Connor, first of all, she is born, now this is the data and I'm using astrotheme.com because they seem to have good data. So you have a Sag moon, Sag moon, bachelorette and bachelors of the zodiac not wanting to commit there i feel like i have a sag moon anyway she was born december 8th 1966 she was born in dublin ireland now that i found out i have a lot of irish in me i feel a kinship with any irish people and i know where my temper came from now <laughs> anyway she's she's a sagittarius sun and a sagittarius ascendant her moon is in libra I believe she also, and what is it? She's a fire. Oh, of course she's a fire horse. I'm a fire horse. And she's a birth path six. Birth path, birth path six is very interesting because I was just talking about it earlier tonight with my friend Terry, but it's, it's work, it's family, it's keeping yourself in line with those things and focusing on those things. So they can be workaholics because they want to build a family atmosphere. Oh, you're a six. Okay. See, wait, I have five Gemini planets all in the eighth. Well, that makes you more like a Scorpio, and that's called a stellium. Four more planets in the same house can even be out of house sign, but conjunct. Four, four more planets conjunct usually in the same house. Okay, so when we're looking at a double sign, so when we're looking at somebody's um, ascendant and sun sign and ascendant, and it's double, okay? Yeah, Jason is a six. My Jace is a six. Uh, anyway, we're looking, we're looking at that. We're looking to see if the sun is behind the ascendant or up front in public. Okay. So if the sun is, my ears are reverberating. Someone does not want me talking right now. Go away. Anyway, the, if the sun is behind the ascendant and it's up in the 12th, I, well, yeah, here we go. It's way short. It's shaved like, yeah. And then I had to cut because I'm a weirdo. Uh, thank you, Eric. Oh my God. Thank you. As somebody was just rattling in my ear. If the sun is behind the ascendant, the person is literally dealing with past life stuff. What she has behind the ascendant is Mercury conjunct Neptune. She has it behind the ascendant and it's in the sign of Scorpio. Now here's what's interesting about that. That's her addiction issues. Neptune is alcoholism for sure. So if you're not an alcoholic, then, you know, parlay it into any number of addictions. Neptune in the 12th. Also, philosophically, conjunct Mercury, she, she projects from a spiritual point. So I was trying to figure out why her son died. Why did he die? Was this payback for something? Um, you know, is she one of them? Whatever, however you want to word that. And I am going to talk about what I saw. I got a message in my head from her son son when I looked at the picture and I didn't even know how many kids she had or anything I just read it and it 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 actually reverberated through my body her son and her Venus and her ascendant are all in Sagittarius in the first house so no matter what she looks like in this life it doesn't matter she could be tall short thin fat black white Asian red pink green doesn't matter she will be seen as attractive thank you for the super chat you guys 
Um, she will be seen, her son was 17. She will be seen as attractive. And that son in the first house in Sagittarius, and she really truly was the expression of Sagittarius, philosophical, uh, you know, outspoken about theological, religious things, very Sagittarius. But, but she had Mars in Libra and she, of course, has the same Pluto-Uranus conjunction that I have in her ninth house. Now, that is also another component, thinking of that Pope ripping up picture. And she wasn't wrong about that. You should dig up the Vatican. We can't do that because they have a, a wall around the Vatican because they can have a wall, but America is supposed to have open borders. Because, you know, we're supposed to let all the people in according to the Pope and everybody else. Like, we're just supposed to let them in here. But the Vatican is its own city and it's all like that with a fence. Anyway, she was not wrong. What she was doing is she was ripping down with Pluto-Uranus conjunct. Okay, hers are at 20 and 24. So four degree conjunct, married in the ninth house of higher learning, higher knowledge, philosophical truth, theological truth, and religious spiritual teachings up there in the ninth. If she was born in 65, those two would be con combust, those two planets, and then she'd probably be crazy. 65 is a bad year with those two. Oh, of course the Pope is. People are like, they, they yell at her for the Pope. Look what he wears. Look what the Pope wears around his neck. Look what he wears, the scarf, whatever it's called, um, with the pedophile signs on it. Look what the Pope does. Look what he does. You're gonna take, you're gonna take communion. The body and the blood of Christ. No, I'm not. Stop that. No, uh-uh. How do they convince people to do all of this? Thank you guys for the super chats. How do they convince them, right? So anyway, when I looked at her son's face, and I can't pronounce her son's, I cannot pronounce, and she's Saturn. She has Saturn, she's 23 degrees um, Saturn in Pisces. Mine's 28, hers is 23, so she's younger. Anyway, um, she's got Jupiter in the eighth house and it's retrograde. So the repercussions of her ruling planet in the eighth house of karma, death, taxes, metaphysical, spiritual, sexual, sexual abuse, all of those things and a predominance of it is very strong in the chart. Her chart works together, but what I'm focusing on is that Mars in Libra. Yes, I'm doing, yes, she's 55. I, I'm reading her chart. We're the same age. I'm three months older. I'm an August fire horse. She's a Saggy fire horse, uh, December. His name sounds Celtic. Yes, yeah, Celtic. I get it. <laughs> um, no, I opened my books up and now I shut them down. I'm only working a little bit because I have a bunch of charts to do and whatever. Anyway, doesn't matter. So I open them up when I open them up, but you have to check back. Um, okay. Anyhow, what I was seeing with her son, when I looked at the picture of her son, I've never seen her son and he does look like her. They both got the same like round head. She's a round head. They both, <laughs> sorry, here I am talking about people's head shapes again. Her son was enlightened and this will sound crazy, but out of her children, she had four husbands, four children. And she didn't do well in relationships. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say about that. I'm not really sure who does. And for her, it seems like it was difficult, something she was trying to do, but that's that Mars in Libra. The Mars in Libra for her is very specific in her 10th house. It's very, very specific. And the way that it is, and the function of it is, it hits from her 10th to her second. So whatever her beliefs and whatever her foundation is in her thinking, the men in her life come in to kind of uproot it. First, they admire, okay? First, they admire. Then they carry a lot of anger towards her, okay? Now, she has a son. What is a son? A son is masculine male. So Mars and her son sign conjunct Venus. She did love her. Well, she loves all her children. But sun conjunct Venus, okay, and then with the Mars in Libra, sun and Venus in Sag, the Mars in Libra, what happened is her son was born with an expectation on a spiritual level that he wasn't able to deal with. His eyes are, are um, very enlightened. When he crossed out, he sits and he watches is what, is what he said. That's what he said. As soon as I heard it, I heard the words, he sits and he watches. He sits perched and he watches. 
So he's watching the outcome of what happened. And what's interesting is I don't actually feel like he wanted to kill himself. I feel the way that I picked up on her, so obviously he did it, obviously he did it. So this is what happened. But what I feel with her son is I feel like he got caught literally like this in a clothesline of energy and it pulled him and he popped into one reality that was not the one he wanted to be in. And now he sits and he watches. So the soul is at peace, but the soul is observant and the soul is highly elevated in this child. It sounds weird and it's not because it's her child. It doesn't matter whose child it is. I've seen it in people I don't know as children when I see them. But when I see her child, he's an elevated soul. So the elevation of what happened to him. So what I want to say is the fear that we have if we commit suicide in particular. So if we commit suicide, that's a way of saying um, there's a lot of shame around suicide, especially in relationships with people who have been raised in Catholicism, Catholic, all of those things. However, we are not taught on earth the correct, he's an ascended master, exactly. No, very evolved, not joking you. I sound crazy, I realize it. He's a 17 year old boy. I went right into his eyes and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, so he, yeah, no, really, I could see in his eyes. Very, very, very evolved. So he chose this, but here's what's interesting. The reason I feel, the reason I feel, and his poor mother, his poor family, his poor friends, because I completely... Um, no, it wasn't that he couldn't handle it. He was caught in an energetic, um, like, tidal pool, uh, 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 like in the ocean when it pulls you out, and he got pulled out into that experience. I feel like he got caught up. They, the veil is so thin right now that they are trying to take out people with energetic soul power. Kind of ambush, exactly. Ener good one, good one. A ambush energetically and he got tossed into that reality tossed into that dimension so this is what i'm seriously getting i'm not saying he wasn't speaking about killing himself i think i've said it i think a lot of people have said it but he got caught energetically entwined like like rope entwined could not get out of it got tossed out that way now he watches understand the veil is so thin right now and anybody that is a child of god or of the god christ consciousness is literally being targeted that means you could cross the street they took the opportunity and it's weird I can't find his birthday online. If anybody knows it, send it to me. I cannot find it. It's not listed. I mean, I, I don't know when he was born. Um, I know she has a 15-year-old. And they're all different husbands, all of her kids, 135, 124, 117, because I, I had no knowledge of what, what that was, okay, like how many kids she had. But what's interesting is what they're doing right now is anybody who is slightly enlightened, slightly in, uh, evolved, slightly, slightly, just not buying into what's going on energetically, they are targeting. And her son was extremely, and I get him watching. He's literally watching. Like I sit, I'm perched and I watch, I watch, I watch what's going on. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, let's see, March 10th, 2004. Oh my God, a poor Pisces, Jupiter. I told you that Jupiter is being activated. Jupiter just went into Pisces. Now that's very interesting. Oh my God. Okay, so here's why that's interesting. Jupiter is my planet. It's not written in any astrology books, but Jupiter is my planet for death because it is the farthest dimension, ninth house, out of this world, striving. Think of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is man and centaur reaching for the spiritual reality in the sky. So Jupiter just went into Pisces. Wait, let me check what day it did. Well, he's feeling the Jupiter going into Pisces. Anyway, I think it's in Pisces right now. I should know this and I have to always look it up when Jupiter goes into Pisces. Uh, Jupiter's in Pisces. So as of the beginning of the year, end of last year, Jupiter went into Pisces. So that explains the motivation behind it because her Jupiter in the eighth house retrograde is being activated with that. That's also happening for her, which is what I said in the beginning. But her son, um, her son was a, an elevated soul. 
So his experience, this is what I picked up, his experience in suicide is so that the people that resonate with his mother and his family's energy, the people that resonate with his mother, okay, anybody that resonates with her, that has the religious belief that if you commit suicide, you're going to remain in purgatory, he's dispelling that belief. So his death is clearly opening that up because they teach us wrong. That's not what happens. I mean, I don't think you should go around killing yourself. Don't get me wrong here because you're here for a reason. So probably stay for a reason. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, I wish there was a door that I could just knock and go, okay, I, ollie, ollie, auction free. I'm out of here. But he's dispelling it. So now his mother is going to view her child's passing in a particular way and the information will start to come to her and she will start to resonate with why he crossed over and where his soul went, okay? So where did his soul go? And he is an elevated spirit being. So the elevation of his soul will connect her to that strand of thought that will help her process her child's death. Oh, she's got to be very sensitive. Her life's been hell. She spoke out about everything, and I love that she's a warrior. She's an Irish warrior. I love this about her. March 10th. Yes, thank you, guys. Um, I love that. I love that she's just like balls to the wall. She looks like she kind of could be Buddhist at the moment, um, just by the dress that I saw her in. And she's, you know, her drug addiction is very clear in her chart to me, but also her drug addiction starts from trauma in childhood. If you're a drug addict, there's trauma in childhood, period. I don't care what anyone says. They can call me crazy. It doesn't even have to show up in your chart. Doesn't even have to show up in your chart. Uh, does not. Yeah, tore the Pope up. You know what? The Pope, I, I'm, I, I just don't know what to say. The Pope, Mother Teresa, uh, you know, I don't know why I want to say Jerry Sandusky, but I'm going to go that road too. <laughs> I'm just going to pull that name out of the air. These people have been child trafficking and the Pope knows what he does. First of all, the, the Catholic religion that we know, they are excluding so much. They, they're excluding so much that it's not even right. Like you cannot know God through that religion. You think you do. What kind of religion, any religion says, go ahead, murder, do whatever you want to do. You know, say a few Hail, Hail Marys go into confessional, priests in the confession, men of God. Why are you men of God? We are all of God, okay? So why are you men of God? Why are you speaking for God? Nobody appointed you that. You're under nobody's authority, but the churches, which is man-made concept, not saying some of it's not right, not disrespecting it, just saying. So she, Sinead O'Connor, I hope I say her name right, she is going to understand why her son passed because he is going to come to show her. And she's going to find out that her son's soul elevated regardless of how he left this planet. Okay. So regardless of how he left the planet, because when you go to the, when you, you know, they didn't used to do funerals for people who committed suicide. So there are allowances for souls. There are no, it doesn't wash it away. Hello, the Gotti family, the Gambino crime family. Yeah, I just axed off a few people. Let me say some Hail Marys, talk to the priest, have a spaghetti dinner. Bobby, there's Bobby. Bobby, my Bobby's been super sick recently. Super sick and she's getting super better. So this is really good. Um, our soul belongs to God and there is no purgatory for when you commit suicide. And I'll tell you why. I can't prove this 100%, but I'll tell you why. First of all, people are born into different bodies. Obviously, we come in, we come in through different birth experiences. Some people come in and their body is like an itchy wool sweater to them and they fucking hate it, okay? Some people, I believe, are kidnapped and forced into bodies and they hate it. Some people's energetic expression and experience in this world is so egregious to their sensibilities in their heart that it's unbearable for them. But here's what I do wanna say about suicide. And this is from my personal experience. When they say someone committed suicide, I'm going to twist the words a little bit for anybody that has a relative that has committed, quote, committed suicide. They were murdered because a lot of people get thoughts in their head. Kill yourself, take yourself out, jump off the bridge, run in front of the car, do more drugs, do this, do that. That is not uh, that is not their soul speaking. That is outside of their soul, and they cannot distinguish between the thoughts that go in their head, 
Well, for your mother too, it's murder. If your soul is open and sensitive and they can catch in on the depression, they start blah blahing outside of your head. And I have heard it. I have had them tell me to take my own life. And no, I'm not schizophrenic. That's what they do. So it's actually murder from whatever is outside of you speaking into your brain. And if you itchy nose. Oh my God. If you are, um, I'm like, oh my God, itchy. If you are a person who is depressed, distraught, um, in a line of thinking, like a wave going down. Okay. Because they put repetitive thinking. Yes. Bobby, I told you when, when Bobby's daughter feels that, when Vivian feels that, I told her what it was. I said, they're talking outside of her. It's not her. Different things, different chakra systems, different hormones, different emotions can allow them insight. They can hear what we're thinking anyway. That's why, that is why when I feel there's any kind of evil energy around me, I recite grocery lists in my head. This can be people that are wicked. This can be people, um, you know, that I walk by and I can feel evil. This can be you know, the beast system people, you know, all those fucking people. It can be anybody. I can eat, sit down and talk to your face, but I'll be talking about tinfoil in my head. So you will not be able to pick up on my thoughts. They know our thoughts before we go out. They know what we do. And if you are depressed, if you are messed up, um, if you've had some traumatic thing, like say a divorce or you're a teenager and a relationship ended, or in this particular case, I feel like this child was triggered by one of his parents who will not pay attention to him. I have a feeling it's probably the male role model in his life, but that's what I feel, okay? That's what I feel. I feel that there was sadness towards one of the parents who would not respond. I'm so itchy. It's from hacking at my hair. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Uh -huh. Edward scissored hands here. Yeah, cutting away. Um, but that's that's what I feel. Sure, when you get sober, are you kidding? They know you're sober and you don't know what to do with yourself. They come right in right there. So when someone commits suicide, first of all, correctly, and they don't teach you this in religion, there are more than one entities on the planet. Not There's not just humans. There's all kinds of variations of creatures. Just like the animal kingdom, there are not just giraffes running around on the world, okay, or cats or dogs. There's combination of things. So if there's unseen energy that's talking to you through a very thin veil, it's a thin veil, like reaching through um, plastic on a construction site, very thin veil, okay? So a thin, I do, I sit, do grocery lists in my head. Literally, when I'm at events and parties with people that are beast system hookup and I know they're there, I can smile and talk to them, but I'm thinking of oranges, apples, ramen noodle, nail polish, hair. I mean, if they read my mind, they'll be bored out of their fucking mind. And I can still carry on a conversation and I'm doing like this. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm somebody's wife again. I'm never going to be anybody's wife again. Hear me clearly. <laughs> I don't believe in it, all right? Um, watch, I'll, I'll be getting married next week. Kidding, grocery list time, kidding. Um, anyway, and it's a Mercury retrograde. So don't you all go getting married. Like who? I'm going to switch topics for a second here. Machine Gun Kelly and that Megan Fox. Hotter than shit is Megan Fox. Wish I, wish I had that rocking little body. And she's had like three kids. Beautiful woman. Mentally ill, beautiful woman. Why do I say that? First of all, okay, they get married and we're in the shadow period for the retrograde. It goes retrograde tomorrow. Let me tell you the time. Mercury is retrograde. Now, it might work. I don't know their charts. If somebody has Mercury retrograde in their chart, it would work. For a person born with Mercury retrograde, possibly, possibly, maybe, but we're coming up to the Pluto return. So yeah, all right, whatever, let's see. Mercury goes retrograde at 10 degrees of, 10 degrees Aquarius, and I, I did this the other day, and it literally goes tomorrow. So tomorrow it is, these two fools get engaged. Anything you do on a retrograde is like, I don't care what she is. I love her body. I don't care how her body is. She has a rocking ass body. She looks like a chick. Even if she's not a chick, she looks like a girly and she's beautiful. Okay. She really is beautiful. Thanks, Bobby and Kato. Um, she looks darling. Okay. She looks darling. Anyway, Machine Gun Kelly looks like a spindly spider. However, 
here's the thing. If these two bitches are going to be drinking each other's blood, a.k.a. Angelina and Billy Bob, Billy Bob, watch Goliath. He's pretty good. I love Billy Bob. But if these two fuckers are going to, like, drink or eat each other's blood or whatever the hell they're talking about, here's a suggestion, Megan Fox. Why don't you make him eat your period blood? And then I might fucking believe that you're swapping blood. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, what the hell? I mean, seriously, give him your period blood. Give him a pad. Give him a tampon to suck on. Wasn't it Prince Charles that wanted that? Yeah, give him that. Do that. You know that women do do that, right? No, no, seriously. I've worked in this field for almost 40 years, and there were so many women that used to come in and they're like, can you do a candle for me? Can you do a spell? I want my neighbor's husband. I'm going to cook some cookies for him, and I'm going to... Um, you know, they put their period blood in them. Yeah. So really be careful who you eat food from. This is just, just adds to poisoning fear all over the place. But no, they do that. That's part, that's, that's a form of magic. Usually it's, um, Santeria. And there's a lot of women that do that. They want to keep their man. So they actually put their period blood in the food. Yes, they do. So Megan Fox, bitch, get a little vial, just Put it between your legs, get a little vial, get your period blood, give it to your man there. Then I'll believe you're doing what you're doing. Otherwise, you're grandstanding and pushing the beast system agenda. That's what you're doing. Also, you'd be wearing the black and white outfit. Whatever. Cliche. Um, yeah, no, they do that in spells. They totally do it. I've, I've People have asked me to do it. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Men don't even know what happens to them. Men do not even know what happens to them. Thank you for the super chat. Men do not know what happens to them, okay? They do not know. Because if a woman wants them and they are into any kind of energy manipulation, in it's manipulation. If the man doesn't want you, you don't need to cook his food with your menstrual blood in it, right? Oh, can you imagine like the whole family's eating like the cookies? <laughs> I don't know, no, 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 okay, <laughs> no, oh God, they're, yeah, they're fucking stupid, women every, and women you don't even know, like, I had one client, and I spoke of her before, I'm not saying her name, because I know she'll be watching this, absolutely, she weighed about 200 pounds, she was a big girl, 5'10", she wore mini skirts. She had more boyfriends than and she did not care. She wore white spandex mini skirts. She had her hair weave on. She was fantastic looking, okay? She was really confident. She had all these men. She had a really good looking husband who was a good worker, beautiful husband, okay? I met her husband. I knew her kids, all of that. She would literally be doing these menstrual period blood spells for like six other men over here to have them attached to her energy, Yes. And I'd say, stop doing that. Uh, like, stop. And actually, when when I met my uh, one of my best friends, we worked in, uh, in offices with a bunch of psychic people. So when I had my period, okay, like I'm talking when my kids were little, I would go into the bathroom. I carried a plastic bag in my purse Yes, I did. And I did not leave my, because it says don't flush your tampons and you have that container. If anybody in there that was a witch, wit, witch got a whiff of you being on your period, they would be taking your tampon and doing shit to block you. So I literally would take my tampons home in my purse in a plastic bag. That's what I did. And I would get rid of them. No, this spout, this is what they fucking do, telling you. I know, things you never wanted to hear in as <laughs> you're eating dinner. So I would take my tampons home, really. I come home with a purse full of tampons. Like it was a joke in our house. Like go in my purse and get my wallet. Ew, what's this? I'm like, oh yeah, I can't leave them at work. I would never carry a hairbrush in my purse because if you brush your hair, they'll take your hair to do a spell on you. These bitches, if you make more money than them or they make more money than you, that's what they would do. No, I'm being serious in the metaphysical world. You think I'm playing games? I'm not playing games with that. They actually would do that shit. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I carried it all back with me. Disposed of it in my own way, in my own house. And just, you know, because nobody in my house be taking my tampons out, you know, like that. No nail clippings, no hair, no way. And you know what? I'll tell you something. My little Jason, when he got his first haircut, 
So both my kids were like little toddlers, like two, okay? Both of them, when they, Keithy had hair down to like here when he got his hair cut and Jason, Jason had like a cute, I call it a little turkey booter. He had the dark hair back there. But when they cut his hair, he knew to go get it out of the garbage and brought it back over and would not let them take it. When they sweeped it off the floor, he went and grabbed it. He was just a little toddler. I can still see him. And he was like, no, 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 no. Um, so people do all kinds of things. And little souls that come into little bodies that know how to play with that, you'll see it very young. So yeah, they do it. Oh yeah, they do it. They just know. Keithy wasn't like that, but Jason was like, no, Jason knows. I've he, Jason, Jason understands. Keith understood in a different way, but it's people do all kinds of things like that. Well, locks of love is for little kids with cancer. Like, you know, they have cancer. Like if you don't have hair, I mean, can't, you know, from cancer. I mean, I, I think it would be okay to give your hair to somebody for a wig, honestly. Those poor little kids don't, I mean... Like when you fuck your own hair up and that's just temporary, those little kids, right? So be very careful because when I'm thinking about Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, you know, and them licking each other, <laughs> shut up. But it, do you know how immature that looks? It looks like this just reminds me of dumb Angelina and Billy Bob, you know? Um, yeah, no, Jason, Bobby, you know, Jason's story. Bobby knows him very well. Um, so yeah. Anyway, for you that don't know Bobby, Bobby is my God sent PI, very good PI. Anyway, so Bobby and I have forged a relationship with Keith, Keith not being here. Anyway, that's the story of her. So check her out. Check Bobby out. Anyway, yeah, they do that. Put a spell on me. No, no, no. I will never put a spell on anyone. I don't want anyone who doesn't want me. Maybe if I was 20, I might try to get you to like me, but then that's like patriarchal women fighting. I, I don't fucking want you if you don't want me. If you don't fucking want me, then goodbye. Don't. See ya. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, we don't know if locks or love, love are real. You could ask them and vet them and see what they do with the wigs and ask them to send you a picture of the kid with your wigs. Or you could go have a wig made and take it to somebody that you want. I believe with charity, and I just said this to the poor girl today, I was getting these really cute shoes. Oh my God, they're so cute. Hold on, I'm gonna show you guys these shoes. I have to bend over and take my shoes off. Look at these little camo shoes with fur in them. Little camo, little camo fur shoes, okay? They're so cute. Anyway, the girl at the counter, she's like, do you want to donate to little kids with cancer? She actually said that. I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> People look at you. I go, these charities steal. So if I want to help somebody, I'm going to take stuff to them personally in my day-to-day -day life. So I will find somebody that I can personally help. That way I know they got it. Because here's the thing. If I'm in a corporate business, Best Buy, I happened to be in Marshalls today. That's where I got the shoes. And they were on sale, $16. Super cute. So that's a deal. Anyway, if I'm in Marshalls, which is really TJ Maxx, which is really that whole conglomeration, then they have enough money. They don't need to be taking my money. That's part of the B system. Oh, here, feel good. Donate charity so they can keep it in their back room. They have more money than God themselves. So fucking you people donate. How about that, bitches? You donate. Instead of asking me why, you're corporate, you make a shit ton of fucking money, take some off the top, and you donate it. But they don't want to go into their own pockets, they want to take your fucking money. You know what this reminds me of? If you work in Hollywood, they want to produce your show, but they want to get backers for it. You fucking people have a shit ton of money. Just put the show up and do it, assholes. So that's part of the B system. So no, I never donate like that. And I say it every time. At Best Buy, I go, I'm not donating. You people donate. Why don't you fucking donate? Not the employee, the person, the corporate office. Hey, CEO with your private plane and your fucking whatever. What are you asking me for money? You know, most people in Best Buy saving up for a month to buy a TV or a phone or a phone cover for $50 or whatever. Why don't you corporate America? Why don't you fucking donate? Don't use our money and then get your donation award off of the backs of the people that you consider to be the peon ants in the society. Idiots. Um, yeah. So there you go.
That's, I, I'm just like, ugh, whatever. Um, <laughs> I want my neighbor's husband. Oh, no, you do not. We'll get your menstrual blood out and cook him a meal. Ugh, ugh. No, you got to do some other stuff, but they do do that. Don't put your body shit in. Like, what is wrong with everybody? Like, ew. Like, what if you have herpes? You know, I go to herpes with that. Anyway, getting back to Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> Ah, oh, thank you for that, you guys. But getting back to Sinead O'Connor, her son was enlightened and he got caught in an energetic whirlpool. That's the word I was looking for. And he's out of his body, but he's now watching. So there's something that's taking place with his passing that he's now watching. He's completely at peace or at observance, in observance, so in detachment from it. So that's actually a good thing. I feel like that's a good thing for him, but that's not gonna be good for his mother. Her heart's broken now, she will be broken. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, a lot of them work in barbershops, they collect the hair and they fuck with people. Anyway, the next thing I wanted to say, some jokester on here, some troll, some whatever, wanted to talk about Bob Saget again and wanted to say he's America's dad and the roast is a roast. I'm going to say this once and for all. If you watch that roast, if you watch the roast and you hear those comments, that is not funny. It's not funny. And it is making jokes to make you feel desensitized to the idea of grown-ass men raping children. That's what that roast was about. I'm going to say it again. And then the stupid person on here, the troll that commented, to you troll, the troll that commented, she commented nicely, but she can suck my dick that I don't have, but she can suck it because that's my sentence for the year, suck my dick. Anyway, she was talking about Gilbert Godfrey or Gothfrey or whatever his name is, nasty little spaces like that. Anyway, him, she can talk about him and she goes, he said it twice that it didn't really happen. And I'm like, do you not understand occult practices? See, if she's somebody who lives in a world where she just thinks it's earth and God, then she is not aware of what they do hidden in plain sight. Now, it is never funny to do a roast about a man who plays America's father, and I'm gonna fucking say it again, has two little baby twin girls, and these two, thank you for the super chat, thank you. Thank you, Copper, thank you. Um, I think that's what your name was. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank everybody for them tonight. It's very generous. Um, the Olsen twins. And they were like little teeny babies. They were his children on the show. And the cast members are making jokes about them getting sodomized. Yeah, fun. Good. That's funny. And this woman's like, it's a roast. And that's how roasts are. I'm like, that's you not critically thinking. Like if you were smart, you would critically think, troll lady. You would critically think. You would think. You would think. To yourself, why are these people doing this? Because it's not funny. And you're a troll because you think that that's the way a roast should be. Now, roasts are mean-spirited for sure. And I don't know that I'd want to participate in one. But I can damn well tell you if my cast members after 10 years of doing a show or whatever it was, talk that way, even in jest about me, their car tires would be flattened. They would be punched in the face. And I wouldn't be there listening after the first idiot said what he said period. You're not going to, it's not funny. And I wouldn't be laughing. It's not funny. I'd be mortified and I'd be afraid that somebody believed it and it would be offensive to my heart. So troll lady. Oh, I know. I know it's a humiliation, a ritual. I, I know what they are, but the fact that people can't see that they're trying to make the agenda pedophilic is a real problem for me. That's a real problem. So I don't like it. Now, what I will tell you is as we move through this energy, because we're coming up on the Pluto return. So good luck, y'all. Good luck. <laughs> Peace out. Put your, I don't know, gas masks on, I guess. I don't know what's going to happen, but they're going to blow it on up for sure. Being, yeah, I know. Marina, brought, well, I always wondered why artists were artists when they would put like shit on canvas B system, shit, that's not art. Why don't you draw a picture of a flower or a person or a puppy or a storm or a boat or something? No, no, they got to shit on a canvas and then say, I'm going to charge, you know, whatever. 
And if you look at Picasso, I don't care for Picasso. I don't not care for it. I'm just like, that's odd. The fragmented mind of an MK Ultra person, that's what his pictures are. He can't see through the eyes, okay, of a Christ consciousness. He's seeing through the fragmented mind, his fragmented mind, okay? Fragmented. Think about it. Fragmented. Okay, wait. Well, Kate and George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what Marina Bramovic is. Okay, yes, just watch Licorice. Wait, yes, just watch. I didn't, I have no idea what Licorice Pizza is. Salvador Dali, they do it. The minds are fragmented. They're fragment. I don't care what it's called. I can see what they're doing with it. I can see what's going on with it. It's very interesting. It's just, it's interesting. It's a fragmented, call it whatever you want, cubism. Okay, is that what we're calling it? Fine. Um, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, that's fine. Happy birthday to Misty, whoever she is. Fragmented. It's fragmented. So the brain is fragmented. That's what you're seeing with Wendy Williams. That's what you're seeing with a lot of people that they say are having breakdowns. They're fragmented. And this makes me wonder if they are injected with something we wouldn't know about it, but injected with something in their body. Um, yeah, if you want to believe anything on the news, you go for it. Betty White, Betty White, Betty White was given a doorway out, so she took it. And she took it, and I'll tell you why they did it with Betty White, whom I never liked, which you already know that. But here, I don't feel it's sad for Betty White. She was 99. Even if I liked her and she's 99, I would miss her, but she's 99. How long do you expect to live on the planet Earth? Do you think you're entitled to live all the time? Do you think you should just like be running around being here I am for 100? Um, MK Ultra. well, if you want to look up, yes, MK Ultra is real. And let's just look at it in a different way. If you have kids and you're in a domestically violent relationship, but you love your kids, so you don't want your wealthy husband taking your kids. Okay, so let's say you're married to somebody who's completely wealthy and you have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So the wealthy husband has mistresses, he runs a company, he doesn't give you any money, you can't wear makeup, he calls you a whore, he punches you in the face. That's a form of MK Ultra because you're not leaving him, you're staying for your kids. Something mentally makes you think you should stay until you get your courage up and you leave, right? So then extend it down to Project Paperclip, which comes directly from Germany, from all of the people during World War II, and the ones that took the um, passports, birth certificates of the any number of six million killed people, Jews in Nazi Germany, and they took their names, assimilated themselves as those people fraudulently, fraudulently posed as dead people came into both Canada and America. Now in the 50s, they ran... Um, the hospitals in Canada, Montreal and Quebec. It's always Montreal and Quebec. In Montreal and Quebec, they ran the hospitals there. It's called Project Paperclip. They passed themselves off as doctors and they experimented using all kinds of electroshock therapy, all kinds of starvation, lack of sleep, uh, lights, you know, waterboarding, however you want. We, you've heard the word waterboarding. If you waterboard someone enough and they don't have any information, then you know what's going to happen to them. They're going to be very, very like screwed up. So let's take that a step farther. You're born into a family. Your name's Nicole Kidman. Your father's Anthony Kidman. He's a Luciferian. He's a child hunter. Anyway, you're born into that family. So when you're born into that family, they take you during the nurturing stage Go to Russia. Think of babies that are put into orphanages and they have attachment disorder. Attachment disorder because they are placed in orphanages for the developmental phase of babyhood. Go back to Luciferian families. Those children are traumatized. Readmittant enforcement. I love you. I'm not coming in. Peekaboo, mommy's smiling. No more mommy smiling. Mommy's leaving. Now you're going to cry for a day and mommy's not coming in and she's not going to be smiling. She's going to be angry. So the baby's like, mommy's angry when I cry. So the baby stays silent. When the baby gets to be two or three, then there's the sexual abuse that opens up the chakra system, which they gain power from, but it also splits the mind because they are pre-verbal. If you are pre verbal, you cannot tell what happened to you. Therefore, you have to access it into your brain. 
fragmenting, repeated over and over again, and that's what's going to happen. But there's many different kinds, Manchurian candidate. There's many different kinds of MK Ultra. Canada's notorious in their psychiatric hospitals all over Montreal and Quebec, and they are now suing for people that were put in there in the 70s. Thank God I was not. Um, but if you were put in there, look what they do to kids on Ritalin. They split the mind with methamphetamine, which is what Ritalin is. They split the mind with methamphetamine. That's what they do. They split it. They go, your kids are too hyper and too fucked up. They be, make them drug addicts in childhood because they tell you that that's not normal for your child. How do you know what's normal for my child? How do you know? Do you know? Do you know? You do not know. So they split the kids' minds with that and that's what happens. And then you end up with a kid like Kurt Cobain who's homeless living under a bridge and his brain's talking and he ends up in a swirling mess and that's what happens. You know, there you go. So take it. Yeah, well, adults take it for weight. I'm talking about a six-year-old kid in first grade. I mean, you need to drug them with a methamphetamine? Why? Why do you need to drug them? What's that? Um, yeah, they took Betty White out. I mean, Betty White, okay, she just is whatever. And you don't think she got that famous. You don't think that this society gives two shits about old people unless they can profiteer it off them. So let's look at this in a different way. Betty White systematically climbed the ladder, but then she got into her 60s and no one in society cares about that. And suddenly she's a huge hit. Y'all are brainwashed thinking, oh my God, she's old and so cute, cute Betty White. What is that? Do you know her personally? Are you eating dinner with her? Like, what's that about? You can like her, but what is that about? Then they plan her 100th birthday party. Y'all buy tickets, not you all. Some all buy tickets. They have all of these events going on. So then they kill her. I mean, she dies. She's 99. She dies. And they can still heighten the energy by bringing it up and celebrating or turning the TV on, bombarding us. Betty White, Betty White, Betty White. And they harvest our energy during that process because some people actually feel empathy for her because she's 99. But anybody that is 99, I'm happy for them. They're out of this body and they're on to the next adventure. So, I mean, you know, my grandparents were 97 and 94 when they died. I didn't, I didn't cry. I mean, I'm sorry, but you're in your 90s. Like, good for you. You lived a good life. I will miss you and I love you and I will celebrate you, but you're in your 90s. What the fuck are you so bent up and out of shape? You're in your 90s. Yeah. Anyway, that, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to say about it. Like, you'll miss them. You may cry for a second. No, she's dead. She's dead. But here's the thing. When you use the word dead... Okay, so many people are reporting celebrities alive, celebrities, you know, Michael Jackson's not dead, he's dead. Um, you know, I, I do not want to be alive. Jennifer Lawrence slept with, what's his name? Her name, Harvey Weinstein. That's where she got it. She was with Weinstein. So Renee Zellweger, her, Charlize Theron. There you go. And my joke used to be 25 years ago, Weinstein is the only straight producer in town till I found out that he was transgendered and one of his victims said he had a vagina or it looked like it or sex change or some kind of nasty ass surgery down there. Yeah. Anyway, that was in the court testimony. Don't come for me and say I'm one of those weirdos. That's in the court testimony. So I take that back. He was not one of the straight producers. He was transgendered. That's why he's like an ugly little troll. They gave him female hormones and he looks like that. He's all batshit crazy. So yeah, confused generals, exactly. So that's, you know, that's what happened. Um, it's interesting. It's very interesting because when you're looking at people saying celebrities like Michael Jackson are alive and this kind of thing, what you're seeing is you're seeing it so close to the veil. Sorry, my phone here. You're seeing it so close to the veil that their energy is able to pop through quite a bit bit and that's what you're that's what you're seeing okay you are seeing that you are seeing them pop through the veil energetically and impress upon you impress upon your thinking that they are still here because you have you have idolized them so Michael Jackson I mean who didn't love his music I loved his music so when you think of Michael Jackson everybody knows his songs even if you're a hardcore rocker Christian music country music, you hear Michael Jackson, 
you move. Like, I mean, it's universal music. So your energy connects to his mindset so they can use your thinking of him to project their thinking onto you. And people can pick that up. People don't understand it. No, I haven't. Ha Wait, Rocky Peak. Where is Rocky Peak? Remind me. I probably have. Anyway, that's actually what happens with them. That's what happens. So that's why you can think it because they are on the next level right next to here. They are literally right over there. So it's like they're through the wall of your house and your neighbor's yard. That's where they are. Oh, near Simi Valley. Yes. Then yes, I have. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I know that one. Yes. I don't do it a lot, but yes. Um, yes. Remote viewing is not hard. Re I mean, remote viewing is relatively easy and you can practice with it. You can look towards, you can, you can put it in your head you know, to think of, I don't know, what happened during someone broke into someone's house. What happened? Whatever thoughts come to your head, start focusing on it. And a way to practice is to get somebody to put a word or a place or an object in an envelope. And then you try to go into the envelope and see it. It's a focusing of the mind. But you have to get rid of the way that we think because we think we can't do that because we're taught that we can't do that. So you can understand, uh, let's see. Yeah, remote viewing, absolutely. I don't know if everybody should do it. I can't speak for everybody. <laughs> I can't speak for them. So I don't know if you should do it or not. I, I think it's up to the person. Mew Mew's asleep over there. She got out last night. I got home. She took off and it's the middle of the night and she's running around all in heat. Meow, meow, meow out there. I'm like, God bless it. And so I got my broom. She wouldn't come in. I couldn't catch her. She was scaling up on the side of trees and doing all kinds of bullshit. So anyway... I didn't let my eyes off her. I'd shut the door and she would, I could feel her go across the camera. And I was like, it's fucking almost midnight. Get in the house, you little bitch. And so my neighbor's camera can see in our yard. So her camera is going off all the time. And, and I'm, I'm out there going, you fucking bitch, get in the house. Like I'm cussing her out. Anyway, I had to climb up on the planter. She, I put food over here. She went running for the food. I snatched her up. Out came her nails. I threw her in the house, scolded her. So she's sleeping over there. <laughs> it took me an hour. I know I have a, I, I have an appointment to do it. I'm going to do it. I told you all. They put ads on TV. We'll spay and neuter your cat low cost, this and that. The lowest cost I could find is $300. That's not a low cost. I have an appointment. A lot of vets aren't doing it anymore because they don't want to go in and touch their tiny little uteruses, okay? She's going to be angry at me when I cut out her uterus and her little fallopian tube. She wants to have fun. So <laughs> she's going to be mad at me. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. She's hilarious. But anyway, cats go in heat two to three times a year for a month at a time. So that's like 90 days a year. This is what my vet told me. Um, I know 300 and that's the cheapest. My actual vet quoted me 800. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, does a guy, how much does a guy get in his, you know, whatever, um, vasectomy costs? Like if you were to pay cash, does it cost more than 800? I don't know. Anyway, um, so that's it. So she got out, she got out and she got bad shit crazy out there furring it up all over the neighborhood, calling in the boys. I'm like, if these bitch cats come over here looking for you, I'm going to hurt them. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I said. But it took me an hour to catch her. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, up and down, up and down the tree, up the palm tree, down the palm tree, up the planters, down the planters, behind the planters. I couldn't get behind the planters. I couldn't even see where they were because it was pitch black out there. Yeah, it's expensive. I mean, it's expensive to do that. So, yeah, the anesthesia is expensive. All of that's expensive. Yeah. So anyway, she's a wildcat. She's furring it up everywhere. She tried to get on the bed. I'm like, you will not. I know she's a hussy. It's okay. I want her to have babies. I just don't want to raise the babies. <laughs> but I don't want to hurt her feelings that I cut her little privates too. It feels very barbaric. It does. It feels bad to me. She's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> she's in heat. You should hear her keep me up all night. Mew, 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 mew. And she's howling and then she's rolling on the ground. I'm like, Jesus, what is going on here? Oh my God. Anyway, yeah, she was so cute. Um, 
but yeah, she'll settle down. I'm still, I'm allergic to cats too. Yeah, I know I'm allergic, but yeah, 800 from my dentist that I've had since I had Tucker and I had Tucker before I had kids. So I had Tucker 31 years ago, my standard poodle, Tucker. He was named Tucker so I could scream obscenities out the door and you wouldn't know. But anyway, Tucker, I've had, well, actually it was my vet's dad. Who cares? Anyway, that's the thing. Uh, I know it's uh, barbaric to make her. I'm not making her anything. She's not pregnant. She just got out. I had my hands full of groceries and stuff. She just took off. I mean, cats are going to get out. Don't make it like I'm trying to prostitute the cat. Don't make it like that. Oh, it's this. How do you actually know what the kittens feel? Maybe they want to bring kitten souls through. Maybe they want to do it because she liked to be a mommy. How do we know? How do we know? Oh, you got dumped. Ew, I'm sorry. But it's Mercury Retrograde. They'll be back. How do I know she doesn't want to have babies? I don't know. She is a baby. She's six months old, but she got her period, cat period, whatever. So, yeah, I like being a mom, too. I know. Oh. <laughs> I know, they're like, don't make her a baby machine. Is she pregnant? No, I have my eyes on her. And I would have fucking hosed down the boy cat that came over or the raccoon or the skunk. All of them have been around the house. Anyway, <laughs> it's $300. That's the cheapest I could find in Los Angeles. There's a three-month wait. There's some places that are $90, but it's three months, four months. So, yeah, I don't know if I just want to cut her privates out. Oh my God, for two boys. Oh my goodness. Okay, for two though. Yeah, so anyway, that's what happened. She just took off like a crazy bitch and I was out there running around. I'm in my pajama bottoms. I'm freezing. I got my winter coat on. I'm in flip-flops running around. I'm lucky I didn't fall off the side of the, the building. The opossums. Yeah, those possums will be here, right? So there's a bunch of them. Okay, so anyway, pet insurance. Yeah, like I'm going to buy, but I don't have insurance. I don't have health insurance. So you think I'm going to be pet insurance? I know cats are cute. I like the kitties. She's cute. Anyway, my dogs are virgins. Sorry, not sir. Yeah, well, I'm not saying they're supposed to go out and get laid. Tucker was mad at me when I fixed him. Tulip was pissed off when I fixed her. And the boy cat still came around looking at my tulip. Because she was pretty and they wanted to have sex with her, but she didn't like them. She never liked a male cat after that, my tulip. Anyway, she was like a spinster cat after that. That's what makes me worried. I want them to feel all cat, you know, happy. Anyway, <laughs> oh, two dogs, 800, 1,000 bucks. Oh my God. Anyway, not the point. So the energy right now, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of these people being taken out and off the planet. So if somebody else comes on here and talks about Bob Saget being a good person because the TV network wanted you to think that he was America's dad, I'm going to say that you're mentally ill. And that's what I'm going to say. You are mentally ill. Because first of all, he's not America's dad. That's not my version of a dad. Secondly, just secondly, that's all I'm going to say. Secondly. I'm not even going to say it, but there you go. Yes, the pay, credit card. I haven't even done that. Birth control. I know there is no birth control, but I heard of some kind of hormonal shot you could give them. I don't really know much about that. My vet wants 12. Oh my God, 1200. You could get some like part of a boob for 1200 or something. My cat does the same. Out the door they go. Anyhow, the energy right now, we are coming up. We are in a Mercury retrograde. We then have Mars going retrograde. We have the Pluto return. Let me see when Mars goes direct because that will be the call for war that we're going to have. Also, Quebec, Canada, Quebecois, all of you Quebecois people out there, what the fuck is wrong with your province? Okay, Quebec and Montreal, what is wrong? What is wrong? They are fighting people who don't get the jab in the arm. They are fighting them. They're fighting you monthly. Get up there, get in the government's face, slap those people back. Uh, lipstick color. It's that dollar store lip liner and Mac. And I can't remember the name of it. Fight the people back in Quebec. Fight, fight, fight them. Get over yourself. It's never going to end. If you comply, it's never going to end. Get up there. They're fining you because you won't put something that doesn't work in your body. According to everybody, it doesn't work. Oh, big time. No, Quebec is, um, which I'll tell you who is. Hold on. 
Oh no, it's not on this phone. Hold on, hold on. I will find it. Uh, yeah, let me look. Oh shit. I can't find it. Anyway, it's, it's Germany, uh, Greece, it's, uh, Austria, Greece, and Quebec. All of them are finding you. And I want to say that Austria was 4,000 a month, up to 4,000 a month. Government needs to be ousted. Oh, I, Quebec has always been. Trust me, I grew up in Canada. I escaped Canada. When I came to the United States, I've told this story a bazillion times. They said, you cannot file for political asylum from Canada. I'm like, you don't understand. I could feel this coming. But Quebec is the one teeny little area, the Quebecois. We all had to speak French for these fuckers growing up. We all had to take French. Um, Western... Uh, Australia, oh my God. Australia, people, you've got to fight. You've got to get up and fight. Everybody has to start fighting in Australia. They should be throwing these people out. These people are demonic. How dare a government, how dare a government tell you what to put in your body? People say your body, you're right, but not when it comes to this nonsense. I mean, they said it doesn't work. Did anybody else here or not? Go look at Anomaly Show. Go look at Anomaly Show from two days ago when he's talking about the head of Pfizer who says it never did work. So all of Israel is vaxxed with Pfizer. What's that about? They're all getting sick. What's that about? You want to take 500 jabs? Is that what you want to do? Keep taking them. I mean, you might as well smoke meth, crack, shoot up heroin. At least you get a little rush off it. Smoke opium. Drink. I mean, if you're going to do that, you you got as much chance doing that as it's the brainwashing is outrageous, outrageous, outrageous. Yeah. You shouldn't be taking three of anything in a year that hasn't been approved for more than a year and a half. Why are you doing that? Why are you letting big pharma? That's actually who it is. Big pharma tell you what you need to have. Why would you do that? Isn't that against your rights? Um, didn't we live for hundreds of, yes, we've been alive and I don't care if I'm alive. What is this fear of death? What it's divide and conquer. They can, I, Hey, I'm on full war. You want to come at me? Come at me. Um, I'm at full war. You I'm in war mode. So I will fight you. I will get in your face. You, what I will martyr myself to prove a point if that's what it takes. Meaning I'm going to keep mouthing off no matter what you do. It's a big lie. It's a big lie. Who was I talking to? Who? Oh, Nancy. Anyway, I was talking to Nancy. You don't know Nancy. And she ta and we were talking about Dr. Fettuccini. Tony Fettuccini, who's really not Italian. But anyway, if he wants to call himself Italian, whatever, Nazi, Himmler. Anyway, Tony Fettuccini did the study in the 80s on the kids in New York City where he used... The PCP test, something just moved on my desk. I didn't move it. I like looked over. It's probably the demons he calls up. Anyway, Tony Fettuccini, he did that. He used the PC, PCR test or whatever they're called to test children for HIV. And they were all getting positives. All these little fucking kids all over the freaking place. Suddenly they got the HIV, right? Like, what's that about? Because you know they don't. So then they were forced to take the HIV mandate, according to Fettuccini. And if their parents said, stop taking the Fettuccini mandate, the parents lost custody of their kids and they went into the foster care system. On what planet is that? On what planet? Yes, they were found in a mass grave. Unfucking believable They all died from the injections. So if you're going to listen to little Fettuccini, and I hearken back to that Julia Roberts sitting there going, oh, Mr. Fettuccini, you are so awesome. How can you save us? Okay, bitch, you're a nut job. Never watching anything you do again because of that fucking statement out of your mouth. You absolute piece of shit. You piece of shit, Julia Roberts, for saying that and going on and agreeing with that guy when you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, right? Um, I don't know. I've heard people tell me how to detox from it. I think once they inject you with something, they inject you with something. So, of course it was man-made. It doesn't exist. They want to take out the gay community. 
And they blamed the Canadian flight attendant for infecting 1,100 people. Like, that guy was busy one weekend. He was just, like, in every bathhouse from here to fucking Brazil, fucking people and giving them HIV. Canadian flight attendant. Canadian flight attendant. There is a way to de detox. I'll have to get that from my friend who told me, but I forgot. Anyway, they blamed it on a Canadian flight attendant because that's ridiculous, all right? So anyway, they, you know they injected the monkey and you know the monkey bit somebody and then so now they blame the monkey like they blame the bat, like they blame the rat, like they blame the whatever. Uh, yeah, so whatever it is. Anyway, I don't even know what to say, but he was responsible for having those kids in... New York City, New York State, injected with a vaccine or a, a, a whatever for HIV, which they all ended up with. And then the parents said, stop this. They were mandated to take the, the, the um, whatever he had for it, the, outcome, the antidote. They all died and they took away the kids. Do you hear me? They took the kids because the parents who are the ones that birth the kids, the parents, they took those fucking kids and they said, you can't raise your kid. We want to tell you what to do. And it was Tony Fettuccini. That guy is back. That guy is back. That little piece of dribbly spaghetti Fettuccini with his white sauce God knows what that is. He's back telling y'all what to do and y'all listening to that kook. He's a fucking kook, okay? I'd like to see him in person. I'd like him to look at me. And if you're going to sit there and support Trump, why did fucking Trump let that little guy stay in his job? So Trump didn't care about the people. Trump is not saving you. He's not saving you. Trump is not saving your ass, okay? He's not saving your ass. No or he wouldn't have put that fucktard in charge of nonsense. Nonsense. No, well, Trump may be, you may think he's cool, but why did he suddenly put that guy in charge, knowing the HIV thing? Because Trump is a New Yorker. So why did that happen? Why? Why, I ask you, did that happen? Okay? Why Fettuccini? And his little wife working for the FDA or the whatever it is, wherever she works to patent stuff. And I might add you, trust the science, trust the science. Okay, shut the fuck up. You used to tell people that, because my dad was a smoker, you used to tell people that smoking cigarettes helped calm their nerves, helped calm them down, <laughs> helped do all of that. How's that working for you smokers out there that your government said? Trust the science. Smoking's good. Smoke while you're pregnant. What? 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 Oh, probably he's gay. He's also a descendant of Himmler, the Eighth Reich. I mean, think about where he comes from. Project Paperclip. Project Paperclip. Project Paperclip. Fettuccini's out there. I can't. Anyway. Let's just look at this in a way. So how do we ascend out of this? More importantly, oh, I was looking at Mars retrograde. That is when we will hit the war, when the announcement, the declaration of war, because we are in a war time, 2022. Because it's a Pluto, it's a Saturn, I mean, the, fuck, the Pluto return for the United States. So let's look to see when Mars... Because it is going to happen. Mars is going to go retrograde. Yeah, Trump's a pile of crap. But anyway, interesting point. Everybody loved Trump when he was on The Apprentice. Can I be on your show? Oh my God, can I be on your show? Can I be on your show? Can I be on the Trumpster show? I want to be on The Apprentice. Can I be on The Apprentice? All these bitches went on The Apprentice until he became president. Why? What did he know? What did he know about you bitches out there? Yeah, exactly. They all wanted, no, no one had a bad word to say about Trump on The Apprentice. But when he became president, he knew what they knew. So, no, he is not. Do your own research. Okay, I don't know who you're talking about, but Fettuccini is part of the Eighth Reich. That's what I'm going to say. 
Tony Fettuccini. I well, no, the descendant of actually the guy with the mustache in Nazi Germany, nineteen thirty-eight to forty-five or whatever it was, forty-six, seven, wherever. That would be Merkel in Germany. That would you just didn't like the way Trump talked. People didn't like the way Trump talked. He's a narcissist talker and. He's like whatever he is, you know, like he's like a fucking bitch ass CEO. If you think that your husband who runs a business and is a multimillionaire doesn't talk like Trump and the men don't talk that way, you're out of your fucking mind. Many of them talk that way. Maybe not everyone, but a lot of them talk that way. Just go work in a strip club and you'll know what I'm talking about. The men with money come into the strip club and they fucking talk that way. That's what they're in there for. That's what our society has taught them we are. Look at my ass. Look at my boobs. Da, 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 da. And men always say, oh, my God, it's about you. Go gain 400 pounds when you get married and see how long you stay married. You won't be staying married. Take your makeup off and wear, like, raggedy ass, I don't know, whatever. You won't be staying married. A woman is more apt to stay with a, with a drug addict, financially suicidal, lying man than a man is to a 400 pound woman that he married that was 125 when he married her go do that and then tell me men are decent okay some men are decent but i'm just saying if you're saying trump's the only one doing that you're out of your mind you're out of your mind mm -mm. if you've been in the clubs you know what they do they got money they have their businesses lunch and they do all kinds of shit they hire i i can't they even like mannequins don't get me started Okay, so I can't get started. My mind was warped from that, actually. So, the hell is that Mars going retrograde? Why have I missed the Mars retrograde? Maybe, it, I forget when the Mars retrograde is now. Yeah, well, Elon Musk seems like he's whatever. Some of the stuff he says I like, though. So, mannequins, exactly. Mannequins. Men, I mean, if a man loves you, hopefully he treats you well, but... My experience, uh, uh, I don't know what to say. My experience is just different with this. Okay, Mars retrograde. Where are we going? We are going retrograde. Oh, good God. October 2022. That's when the financial collapse is. We are going Mars retrograde. 25 degrees, 37 seconds of Gemini. That's when people mouth off the sign of Gemini in the planet of war, right? Going backwards. La, 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 like this, right? Computers, grid down, all of that. Men are, what, women aren't visual? You think we're not visual? You think I want a 400-pound guy in bed? No, I don't. You think women aren't visual? They tell you men are visual so that men can get away with it. Sometimes women are visual too. Very visual. So like when you come in, they're all like, like this. Sometimes women, they're married to their husbands and they're like, ew, same, but more likely a man will, yeah, visual. Women are visual too. What do you, women going out marrying ugly men? It depends what you look for. Uh, does it, no, yeah, it goes, where, did I miss May? Does it go, <laughs> I'm looking at the ephemeris. Hold on, I'm gonna get my other ephemeris out. I can't read that calendar. All right, here we are. So men will be nice. I think when men get older, maybe they get nice unless they're really fucked in the head like, you know who Baldwin? Can't imagine that guy ever being nice. Nor can I imagine him ever not being a misogynistic, sociopathic, lying cuckoo bird. Okay? Like he's out of his mind. I, I don't feel any remorse for that. I didn't do it. I mean, if I'd have done it, I felt remorse. Who had the gun in their hand, mental patient? Yes, I know you only cocked the trigger back. You did it. You're responsible. Sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Okay, hold on one second here. So this is what an ephemeris looks like. So this is May, and I'm going to go through the planets and find when Mars goes retrograde because I literally can't see it in my other book. No, it's going retrograde. All right, I'm not seeing it retrograde till October. Does it go retrograde before? What is wrong with me? Okay, here we are, January. Oh, nope. We got Mercury retrograde. We're right in that. No Mars. No bueno. I should know this off the top of my head, but I have brain damage from whatever. Yeah, that's how we used to have to do charts when I learned, okay? 
I had to take the data, and this is called an ephemeris, and oddly enough, Jet, Jet Propulsion Lab puts it out. It's planetary movement in the mathematical degree. So my original ephemeris is from 1900 to 200, I mean to 2000, 200, 2000. And this one is from two to, from 2000 through the 2100s, okay? So 2022, so to 2122, et cetera. So these are the planets and they go in order of the sun time, sun, Venus, and the nodes, et cetera, right there. So you read across and it tells you the degrees. So we used to have to mathematically figure that out because I'm so old there weren't computers, okay? If they were, I didn't own one. So that's kind of what that is. Does Trump give you the Antichrist vibes? Obama gives me the Antichrist vibes. Actually, I don't think it's either one of them. I think they're all crazy. All right, so then getting back to this Mars, 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 not in March. I think it's October, it goes retrograde. Not, I'm not actually seeing it before then. So it. somebody said May, I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? I could be wrong. Then we got Saturn retrograde, okay. Mm-mm. Mars is going retrograde in October, October. And that's when the financial crash is going to be. So it's going retrograde in October. It's going retrograde at 2536. And that would be October 31st. Fucking Halloween, y'all. Fucking Halloween. Fucking Halloween. So it's going retrograde on Halloween. Just prior to Mars retrograde financial crash. Remember that you're going to wake up in the next three years and all of this and even me here, I won't exist. I mean, you won't be allowed to see me or whatever. You get what, I, ooh, you get what I'm saying, right? So Mars will go direct and I should, I should know this. I should know this. I do not. I can't keep it, retain it in my head lately. Mars should go direct. Yeah, it's a huge, it goes direct January 6th. No, sorry. January 13th of 2023, the declaration of war is going to come out one year from this month next year. Declaration of war. War. So remember I said that. And by what kind of war, I don't know. Is it a war against the, the jab versus the non-jab? The sane versus the insane? Um, Halloween. Yeah, it goes retrograde. Don't go out trick-or-treating with your kids. Probably something shitty will happen because it's Mars retrograde. As I said, Keithy died during a Mars retrograde, literally. So, yeah, financial. You can do gold. We need to get. No, you don't want. I. Well, yeah, Kennedy had the gold standard. And then, of course, whoever stepped in and did whatever they did. I don't even know who did it, right? Um, I am doing readings. But if my calendar shut, it's shut because I can't handle that many people because my brain goes crazy. So you'll have to wait till I open it up again, which will be next month, I'm sure. But anyway, Bob Barker, 400, wait, what, wait, Bob, oh, Bob, Barber, whatever you just said. I thought you said Bob Barker. Oh, anyway, I can't talk about everything in Keith's case right now. Bobby and I know we got shit going on. So Belgium, okay, um, yeah, I know. It's funny when people say they want a reading so bad. There's many brilliant psychics out there. Yes, there's many brilliant psychics. You don't have to want one from me. You can want one from many of the people in your area. Start looking for good people. There's many, many, many professional readers that are very, very good. So sometimes, because I can't take everybody all the time because I just might, look, I'm closing my eyes. I'm like, because... Anyway, uh, yeah, Lisa Bonet came from a monkey, right? Yeah, BS. The, rat, the haunt of virus came from rats. This came from a bat in a market because the people eating. Yeah, Deanna's fantastic. I've already told you, Deanna. And there's many, many people that are super good. So I have many charts to do and many readings. So I have to catch up. I do not like to be booked a year ahead. I don't want to be booked. It gives me anxiety. So I'm anxiety prone. Um, okay, so Lisa Bonet and Jason Momoa. You know I've talked about Jason Momoa. Hot as fuck, but I can't look at him. Here's why I can't. Yeah, Martha Moxley, that fucking Kennedy, that Michael Kennedy. Did he really kill her? Like, they made that guy in. Or was that guy the scapegoat? Did his father do it? I don't know. Anyway, uh, 
Yeah, Martha Moxley's mother never got closure, and the Kennedys always get away with shit. Yeah, Jason Momoa is hot as fuck, but when I saw that video where he was doing what the groomers do, kind of Biden-like, where his um, hands were on his pubescent daughter's chest area with the cameras on you, this is typical grooming, abuse, manipulation, molesting, and people are like, maybe it's a mistake. As a young woman that grew up in an environment like that, it's not a mistake. They do it on purpose. And they do it on purpose because you have a fucking camera looking at you. So what is a kid going to do? Jump up and go, fuck, stop touching me and smack them? No, because there's repercussions at home. And you've been abused at home. And you will get blasted at home. And you may get spanked at home. And you may get fucking waterboarded in your bathtub at home. Somebody may slip some whiskey in your fucking drink at home. It's terrible. That's how it works, okay? That's how it works works. So if people don't think it doesn't work that way, it does work that way. Speaking from someone who came from a childhood like that, they will cover it up, deny it, lie about it, tell you bullshit, blame shift, gaslight, call you crazy. And you know, uh, you're not going to speak out. Most people don't. I did. I left. That's what I did. I left. So that little girl's not going to leave on camera. She's already been brainwashed and she's already in a public family that's hugely public. So she's not going to do it. Just like that little co-worker of Biden's. Um, now I'm spitting. Now I'm twitching and spitting because it pisses me off. Go Google that video. It's, it's, it's like when a guy fucking touches you when you're a little girl and your uncle puts his hand on your ass. Shut up. Get your hand off my ass. No need to touch my fucking ass. I'm a child. You know what I mean? I'm a child. Oh, of course. No, mothers don't believe you. And anyway, ask yourself this. If you are in a home and you need two incomes to complete or somebody has a powerful business or somebody doesn't want, believe you me, abusers do not live in reality. They don't want reality. It's not a judgment on sexual abuse in childhood. It's not a judgment. No judgment. If you come from that and you do whatever, you know, whatever happens, that's whatever happens to you. It's, it's not a judgment. There should be no shame with it. But facts are facts. If somebody fucking does that, then somebody does it. It's like, it's like if somebody's an alcoholic and they're like, I'm not an alcoholic. Listen, you, you, you fucking denier. You are an alcoholic. If somebody's a drug addict, just admit you're a drug addict. Go ahead and be a drug addict. Go ahead and be it. But you got the other kind. Bobby, you and I had similar mothers. <laughs> mm. Go ahead and be a drug addict. Say you're a drug addict. But see, the denial comes into it. Because they don't want to acknowledge their behavior because they would have to atone for it here and now. So that's what happens. So anytime that you see, no, I'm fine about my childhood. I, I'm glad I left home. I mean, it was a little bit dicey. Uh, here's the problem, and I'm going to say it every single time to any child of abuse or any person of, yeah, any person of abuse. If you do not get the therapy you need when you leave home and run away, because you think when you run away at 12, 13, 14, that you're, you know, you got out of it, right? You saved yourself. But here's the thing. You need a therapist who understands your circumstances, not just that you're incorrigible, not just that you're this, that actually understands the level of abuse that you went through and what to label it. Okay, instead of dismiss it as you having the problem, you need them to help you work through that so that you understand what your parents or your abusers were so that you don't work for it, marry it, give birth to it, repeat the cycle because you repeat the cycle because you just ran away from it. So you didn't do it. Yeah, well, the daddy issues, that's funny. They always say daddy issues. There's men with mommy issues. There's women with daddy issues. What that is, is there's abuse issues in childhood, okay? There's abuse issues in childhood. And those abuse issues in childhood lead people to say daddy issues. Somebody who's marrying somebody that's like a five decades older than them, like James Woods and his 20, James Wood and his 20, I know your dad gets pinched. What the 
fuck is that? Bobby's dad needs to be freed. Um, James Wood, who has girlfriends in their 20s when he's in his 60s, that's pedophilic. That's not technically the definition of pedophilic because the woman is a young woman and she's above adult age, but he's 65 or whatever he is. He's an adult really, really taking advantage of a young woman. And don't go telling me he has money. What do you think? All women want money. Sometimes women want to have, um, sometimes women want to have children. They don't need your fucking money because they can make their own money. Sometimes women can be very, very strong and they don't need a man's money. Everybody goes to, she's a gold digger. She's a that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know. Whatever. Whatever. Right. Yeah, she's like 54, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, no. Anyway, it's a problem. It's a problem. I don't know what Wayne Newton is. I can't get past the plastic surgery on his face. Sloan, I'm 43 and still single for 10 years. Okay, well, yeah, it's hard. But you know what? After you've been married, you probably might want to stay single. So, you know, it's just... <laughs> America's dad is Al Bundy, exactly. Hand down his pants on the couch, shit face drunk or whatever, listening to his wife who's running around scamming and whatever. Um, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, anyway. Wait, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Anyhow, when, when we're talking about Lisa Bonet and her husband, and I don't even know their age difference. Someone just told me 12 years. Yeah, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. But you know what? They come from famous families. And again, her first husband, Lenny Kravitz. We love Lenny here. We don't want to think about anything else. We just love Lenny. That's all. That's all I'm saying. And he's older than me by only three years. So he's in my peer group. But he would never date a woman in my peer group because he has been trained to go 20 years younger. Yeah. Who's your daddy, Bob Saget? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Right? Beyonce and Jay-Z, big age gap. Well, yeah, he targeted Beyonce, and she was from a family, and da-da-da-da-da. Blah, blah, right? Ten years, and I'm happily single now. Yeah, marriage isn't unrealistic, unless it's really, really compatible. And I don't know why you have to get married if you're not having kids. If you have kids, I can understand it for the, for the kids, really. But, you know, I don't know. Yeah, if Lenny dated Nicole Kidman, that is disturbing. Woody Allen, I can't. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this again about Woody Allen. For the love of God. Okay, so even though Soon Yi was an, and Andre Prevon's daughter, I can't say his name, the musician, and Mia and Andre adopted Soon Yi, when Woody came into the picture, Woody was his surrogate father. So like if I date you and you have a young son, I don't think about dating your young son. In fact, my stepson was my age and it never fucking crossed my mind. And people used to tell his father, it's going to cross her mind. It never crossed my mind. That is my stepson right there. Never crossed my mind. Never crossed my mind because I'm not a fucking predatory asshole. Anyhow, okay, and he was my 11 months younger. So in my peer group, all right? So... Woody Allen decides he's going to date, cohabitate with Mia Farrow, whatever. She's a bit batshit crazy herself, right? And she's obviously from Illuminati. Yeah, Jimmy was beautiful. Jimmy's handsome as hell. Handsome as hell, but a very nice kid, and I liked him a lot. Never thought of him in that way, just thought about doing his laundry, cooking his dinner, I swear to God. That's just what I thought about doing. I didn't even think, of, I thought I was his friend is what I thought. So Woody Allen decides that he's going to groom, right? He's going to groom his, quote, girlfriend's daughter so that he can fucking marry her. Why people hire this man for a movie? Why people do that? Why they do it, why they think he's talented is disgusting. And then to add insult to injury, he rapes his own daughter. I don't care what they say. That's bio daughter. 
and to add insult to injury, he takes Sun Yi and they adopt two little baby Asian babies like Sun Yi so that he can adopt them and do what to them? Woody Allen. Now the gossip on the island is that Woody Allen likes the girls under the age of 10 and he likes them to call them grandpa and he likes to take pictures of them naked. No, they love Woody. He's a genius. He's not a fucking genius. Number one, he's cockeyed. He's fucking ugly. 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 I mean, he's just hideous. And he married his... Even if you fell in love with Soon Yi, okay? Even if you fell in love with her. Where is your ethics on crossing that boundary? Where's, where's your ethics? Like, what are you doing? Why would you think that that's okay to cross that boundary? On what planet is that okay for you to do? And Soon Yi is brainwashed because she thinks she's married to him and that he loves her and that the abuse will stop there. Meanwhile, she got two baby daughters that look like her that aren't her blood. So good luck with that. Because he's got his sex toys. He adopted them. Very common in adoption. Anyway, but just ask yourself that. I thought it was sickening back then and people are like, no, he's a genius. I'm like, he's not a fucking genius when he does that. Stop giving him credit. Stop building him up. He's not a genius. His movies are immature. They're stupid. All of those things. I thought it years ago. Mia Farrow. Now, she's funny because Frank Sinatra kicked the shit out of her in their marriage. She was what, 19, 20, 25, and he was 50? Totally wrong. No respect for Frank Sinatra. He was a handler, obviously. No, re yes, of course. And they all adopt brown-skinned babies. Now, I've told you about that. I've told you why. Um, yeah. So anyway, did, wait, did you see? Yes, I heard about the new song. That's why... Well, Rowan Farrow is Sinatra's son. If you're going to tell me that kid's Woody Allen's son, but actually, Rowan Farrow, I believe, is a syn synthetic. I'm stuttering tonight. A synthetic, okay? I believe he's a synthetic, meaning I believe he's part, part DNA, clone, and synthetic. So when I look in his eyes, I do see Frank's eyes, but I don't see a heartbeat. And Roman Polanski, you little bitch, get back into the country and take your punishment. You set your wife up for a murder. It was a payoff. Manson got paid off. They all know who did it. Manson was brainwashed. Polanski, get back here. And then Polanski married that young woman, that cute girl that was in the fifth, ninth, oh, whatever, the Johnny Depp movie. Married her, but they divorced. He went younger. You know, it's a lifelong habit with them. Anyway, Polanski, you can't escape justice just because you think you're a smart aleck. You too cannot. And there's Meryl Streep. Bring Polanski back. She's clapping like that. Fuck you, Meryl Streep. Don't watch any Meryl Streep movies. Don't watch them. She's a high priestess. Don't watch them. And she's just absolutely enabling of all that shit. So there's that. That's right. Anyway, let's see. I always felt Leonardo. Oh, Leon Leonardo DiCaprio was. I'm going to tell you a backstory. Friend of mine who was at a party... I'm not going to mention her name. This is a private story, but she was dating at the time one Alan Thicke, I believe. She was dating an Alan Thicke at the time, way back then. Briefly, they were on the date. She went to this party and there was little 10-year-old Leonardo DiCaprio at this adult party. And she was talking to him and he's like, he's like, she didn't know who he was. And he's like, my whole career's planned out for me and this, that, and the other. And she thought that he was like very... Um, ahead of himself. She didn't know how he knew he was going to have that kind of career. Because he already knew what he was going to do and who he was going to do it to. So there's that. Manson was MK Ultra. Manson was a government plant. Manson grew up, Manson's mother was a prostitute and he grew up in the brothels. He was probably safer in the brothels than when the army guy got him and they fucked because his mother's a prostitute. So she'll take money. Um, and then the guy's like, here, I'll help your kid. I'll do this. I'll do that. Blah, blah, blah. And then he comes out like that. So there's that, right? 
all of them. They're all they're all set up. It's a, human beings don't do that. So we have to start understanding. If you do, and I'm gonna, I use this example every time. Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't like Jeffrey Dahmer because he's just like a cannibal, right? Cannibal, a murdering rapist dismembering cannibal, which by the way, Tony Podesta bought the artwork of the last murder of Jeffrey Dahmer. But Jeffrey Dahmer, somehow they figured out how to take the brains of these experimental children, open them up and get them used to having energies come into their bodies. And I, I'm thinking the drugs and alcohol and that army hammer, <laughs> army, Arnie Hammer, Arm and Hammer, that guy, he's also that. He's also that. Their brains have been flipped with. And they, you see, we say they're freaks, but what they are is they're victims. Then the soul comes back in like Jeffrey Dahmer did before he died and said, I don't know why I did this. The reason he didn't know why he did it is because his soul was not there to do it. He was, so I... It's not them doing it. That's the point. We blame them because we see them, but it's not them. They have altars. It, they really do. That's what's going on. That's why they've always said, no, fuck Leonardo DiCaprio in his private plane. Fuck that guy in his, the world is burning up bullshit. Get rid of your plane, Leo. Get rid of your plane. Date someone your own age. Oh, that's right. You wouldn't know how to do that. Yeah. Get rid of your plane, global warming. And you've got your private jet. Shut up. Yeah, they they weaponize human beings. That's exactly correct. So they play with their minds. And then these people go out there. Sonny was Cher's handler. Yeah, but it's funny. Sonny got killed. Remember that? He skied into a tree. Then a Kennedy skied into a tree. Two of them skied into trees. There you go with flat eyes and he was yeah the souls aren't with him and you can know it and his yacht yeah exactly so that's what happened so even manson and manson's whole now the hair's bugging manson's whole stick was that you know swastika cross bleh, like this that's not manson demons love that shit that's who that is that's the demons i mean come on oh sinead is a, a muslim thank you i didn't know what the i didn't didn't look into it. I'm not, I don't really look into it. But when her son died, I picked up on what that energy was, which is what I described in the beginning. Yes, she fell on the bunny hill. Yes, Natasha Richardson. Yeah, exactly. And then his nephew died. So you know what I'm going to say about that? And here's what I'm going to say. The more famous they are, the more friendly you are, the more you're going down beside them. Well, it is. It's demons. There can be more than one in a body. It can be attached outwardly to you and it can be inside you too. So that's what, you know, Dahmer makes no sense. He doesn't. And I think they drink and drug because they can't get the thoughts out of their head. We have to save ourselves. We have to save ourselves. Yeah, they do get killed for their fame. You can't think that you're going to kill other people. Like just, hi, I'm here to offer you a deal. I would like you to kill whoever. So I'm going to give you money and fame. And you don't think they're going to come back after you? What? What? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Right? Oh, my God. Okay. Um, I'm sure she's been attacked by demons. Oh, the weekend. I have no thoughts on him. I'm pretty sure he would have to. If not, it was part of the sodomy ritual. He was involved in childhood pedophilia. Yeah. I mean, he was a child of abuse. Yes, exactly. Prince Andrew, what about the royal family? Do you not know how much I think of the royal family? I don't like the royal family. I told you about Charlie Sheen last time. <laughs> I told you about him. Uh, Marilyn Manson, I told you that. What, what's going on with him? Go watch his show. He does a whole fucking ritual to Satan. I told you when I was at the Staples Center and when I watched him out front, I never saw Marilyn Manson. When I saw one of the sets... When I was in front of the audience and he's screaming Satan, Satan, and he has an upside down cross, I'm videotaping and and his, his song was like, I'm for Satan or whatever. I, I don't know the words. And I'm like, I'm for God in the audience. And I swear, rows of people turned around. <laughs> ah, happy birthday on Saturday. I was cracking up. But he, I mean, it's a ritual. If you're going to chant a song with an upside down cross, He's using that to elevate the energy in his space. That's what he's doing. So most people are. Yeah, I feel they are. 
All right, you guys. Yes, was Kurt Cobain murdered? No, he just happened to step out right then. Yeah, a shotgun shot him twice. A shotgun. Do you know how you have to hold your hands to shoot a shotgun? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for the evening, you guys. I just came on real quick, and now I actually gave myself a headache. So there you go. He has a tattoo known for pedos on his arm. Yeah, that's always fun. All right, peace out, everybody. Let's see, strong enough to take them out down, right? Let's see, do you think Cher has been taken over? Cher is something else. I'm not sure what to think about Cher. Definitely, definitely. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Mwah. Good night, and thank you, and I will see you soon. <laughs> I will see you soon. Peace out. Bye. Okay, how do I turn?